When I was asked for, to play for the ACN concert, uh, I must honestly admit that I never, never visited that museum. So I went on a website and I looked around, and what I actually saw was this immense mixture of cultures, religions, things having to do with trade, connections between people, and uh, it immediately sort of uh, sparkled my, my, my fantasy, my imagination, of making a combination of maybe slightly unlikely instruments and also unlikely musicians in a way. Mm. So, and that's how we ended up actually, um, if I can, can say Dr. Tony, uh, uh, being a Singaporean uh, from, uh, if I'm right, Chinese Indonesian descent. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, a master of Indian music, especially Merdangan playing. And then we have Shafika representing the, the Malay culture, the Malay heritage, and also playing traditional Malay music. And myself as the complete outsider, of course, I identify also with the the others that have been in Singapore and um, I'm a classically trained musician myself but I branched out into improvisation something which is also highly unlikely in classical tradition at this moment so I believe that we all have stuff to bring to the table um, which is a challenge to, to see what kind of music can we make together how can we reflect also on that multitude of cultural elements that we find in the museum. Uh, Kast is, is, a, is a visiting professor and uh, We've often talked about trying to work on a project together and now having worked with Kas, I, I, I realized that one of the best, his best qualities is that he's, he's very open to input from people without actually using words to, to talk about things. So a, lo a lot of times the music flows together based on what one of us would instigate and then that would, that would take off into a, a direction that maybe we never expected, which is, which is the great spirit of improvisation. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a discovery. I mean, uh, of course we know that there's many wonderful musics out there that are uh, connected to a certain culture that are really specifically developed somewhere. At the same time, we feel that music has this universal, many common places, many things that are the same elements used in music and that we can actually easily communicate. Where we have a language barrier, so to say, actually the language barrier of music is much less so. I also think that what's brilliant is that uh, this particular performance that we're putting out, we are also attaching to it the pictures of the artifacts that goes along with the music. Yeah. And so it's being able to uh, view those pictures of the, of the artifacts online as well as listening to the music that is inspired by those uh, artifacts. Um, which I think otherwise wouldn't have been um, done in other ACM performances. Um, I think this is something that is unique to the, this particular performance. The reality is, you know, there's a lot of historical artifacts and things around the world and sometimes you're not able to actually go there in person. So the idea of having some of these things available, well now it's some of the exhibits travel as well, but, but being having things online and being able to view lectures virtually and things like that, it's a good way to, to learn more about some of these artifacts we may not be able to hold in our hands. And of course, being a musician, it's very important that we can communicate directly with our audience in the same space because their reaction and, and the way they respond to the music causes us to, to put a different kind of energy or a different direction into the, the music that we make. So not having that, um, we basically have to feed off of our own energy. We, we, when we're improvising, we're, we're being supportive and, and communicating with each other. Hopefully there, there will be still this uh, beautiful spirit that comes out that the audience can feel through the internet.